We crown you with adoration, enthrone you upon our praises. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. We join with the angels chorus, for we know our God is for us. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. The only true and living God. The only true and living God. Lord of glory, Lord of love. Lord of glory, Lord of love. To you we sing. To you we sing. Our hearts we bring. Our hearts we bring. With hands held high, with hands held high, let holy praise arise. We crown you with adoration, enthrone you upon our praises. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. We join with the angels' chorus. For we know our God is for us. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. We crown you with adoration, enthrone you upon our praises. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. We join with the angels' chorus, for we know our God is for us. You are the King, and you have captured our hearts again. May our homes be filled with dancing. May our homes be filled with dancing. May our streets be filled with joy. May our streets be filled with joy. May injustice bow to Jesus. May injustice bow to Jesus. As the people turn to pray from the mountain to the valley, hear our praises. Rise to you from the heavens to the nations. Hear our singing, fill the air. May our light shine in the darkness. May our light shine in the darkness. As we walk before the cross, as we walk before the cross, may your glory fill the whole earth. May your glory fill the whole earth as the water o'er the seas, from the mountain to the valley. Hear our praises. Rise to you from the heavens to the nations. Hear our singing, fill the air. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You live. 
lead me to streams of peacefulness. You restore my soul. You restore my soul. You will guide me in the paths of righteousness for your I may walk through a valley as dark as death, but I will not fear, no, I will not fear. You are with me, Lord, and your rod and staff, oh, they come Comfort me. You have made a place before my enemies where I belong. Oh Lord, you lead the way. With your wisdom, you guide me. Oh Lord, you keep me safe. The shelter of your wings. You pour out your oil upon my head, and you fill my cup. Lord, you fill my cup. Your love and your kindness will. Come to the table and worship the Savior. Taste what forgiveness is for. His mercy will lead us, the grace of God feed us, making us hungry for more. His body was given for you and for me. Look on the cross and believe. The bread has been broken, our eyes have been opened. Oh, come, Lord, restore and renew, your word has been spoken, so humbled and broken. We do all in remembrance of you. The bread has been broken, and all those who know him believe without touching the scar. His death reconciled us, we live sanctified to become what we already are. To him who loves us and freed us to love, be glory and honor and praise. The bread has been broken, our eyes have been opened. Oh, come, Lord, restore and renew, your word has been spoken, so humbled and broken. We do all in remembrance of you. The bread has been broken. Bread has been broken. Our eyes have been opened. Eyes have been opened. Oh, come, Lord, restore and renew. Your word has been spoken.
and I sing, I lift your holy name up on high, I worship and adore, sing praise forevermore, Hosanna, you're my King. Forevermore, Hosanna, you're my King. I worship and I sing. 
I lift your holy name up on high. I worship and adore, sing praise forevermore. Hosanna, you're my King forevermore. Because I'm an Aggie, I have to say this. Howdy. Howdy. Good. That's a good response. Thank you very much. Good morning, Saturn Road. How are y'all doing this morning? Yes. Outstanding, good. It's so great to be able to see everybody here this morning. Um, if you're online, glad you could be with us as well. We wish you could be here so we could give you hugs and kisses and love on you. Um, there are no announcements for me to give this morning except one thing. Uh, you'll notice that your communion this morning came in a nice little Ziploc bag. You're probably wondering, why is that? Well, it has a purpose. After you take communion this morning, put your communion cup back in that Ziploc bag and zip it up. Because that way your communion cup doesn't drip on the, on the, the pew, doesn't get on your clothes, and on your way out, you just throw it away. All right? So that's what we're going to do today. And uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, so uh, if you would, just, uh, just um, uh, take care of that. And my wife's trying to tell me something. What? Oh, yes, it's hug and howdy time. <laughs> she's, she's getting it to me. She's getting it to me. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, take a, a, just a, a couple of minutes to stand up and, and hug the people around you, love on the people around you. All right, I get the task of getting this rowdy crew back in line. One last hug and uh, go ahead and sit down, please. Love seeing the kids with the palm branches on Palm Sunday. That's fantastic. There are a lot of exciting things going on at Saturn Road right now. Uh, 
some great things happened yesterday with Saturn Road Serves. I understand over 400 people were involved in various service organizations here at the building and across across this area at folks' homes. Uh, we had about 45 people at our location, and it was fantastic. Um, we're continuing the elder uh, selection process, and, that, and we're being blessed in that process. It's moving along very well. We also have some exciting role changes to announce here at the staff. I don't know if you remember uh, nine, months or go, nine months or so ago, we, uh, when we had announced that Jeff was going to be changing roles, we were going to be hiring a new minister, uh, Jeff was going to stay on and lead some roles. Well, that changed, of course, as Jeff left, as we brought in Robbie. But we've been looking, we had some roles we needed to fill, and God's blessed us in that. Um, I'm, I'm going to announce, that, so you can start coming down, um, don't wait for your name to be announced, but um, all of the ministers please come on down, as well as the staff members, elders, and their wives. Okay, so let's, let's get, that, get that parade started as well. Our children's minister, Ryan Maloney, will now serve as our discipleship ministry. He's going to work in several areas that include adult education, our small groups, new members, involvement, marriage, and family. Since he'll, be, since he'll be moving into a new role, Jeanette Clothier is going to be serving as our interim children's minister. She's going to do a great job in that role as we conduct a search process for a replace, Ryan's replacement. And we have plan to have that position filled by this summer. Lisa Kelly will serve as our office manager. She will oversee our support staff in the front office and she'll manage day-to-day -day operations and procedures. We are so thankful for this great group of folks that help lead our church, that help us in our day-to-day -day operations in such a loving way. At this time, I'm going to pray for this group. Dear God, we celebrate these changes. We celebrate the fact that you have brought folks onto this staff, that you have blessed folks within this staff with the abilities, but more importantly for the love of Jesus and those that you came to save, God. We pray that you would be with these folks in the new roles, the people that they work with, with this congregation, so that we are more effective even more effective in your kingdom. We thank you, God, again for blessing us and giving these folks the abilities that you have and their willingness and choosing to use them for your service. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. So last night, Caroline and I were at Cold Stone Creamery. That's one of my guilty pleasures. And had a flavor of ice cream that was Peeps flavored ice cream. Um, I didn't try it, but that reminded me that Easter is here, right? And so this morning, our focus is going to be on preparing our minds um, for the wonderful celebration that we're going to have next week for Easter, but also that we celebrate every day, right? That Jesus is risen and that we worship him and we serve him every day. So if you would please stand. So the scripture is going to look a little bit different on the screen. I'd like you guys as the congregation to read the words that are in red when they come. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? At this, she turned around. Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said. Sir, 
Jesus said to her, Mary, turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, which means teacher. Jesus do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much um, that you sent your only son to die for us, that he rose, that we serve him. And Father, I pray that all the things that are distracting us this morning, we lay them at your feet. Um, we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for this body. And Father, just we love you so much. And through your son's name, amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well, my soul, it is well, with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul. Soul, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious life. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well. the day when the faith shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The drums shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is Who can the 
depths of your love. You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing ever seen or heard, who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above, and I stand. I stand in awe of you. Stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. and read again. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. He said, you know that I love you. feed my lambs. And Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. <laughs> the third time he said to him, Simon, do you love me? He was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Please be seated. How deep the Father's love for us. anything 
no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom, but this I'm an Aggie, so I guess I have to say this. Howdy. So I have a confession to make. I watched Dirty Dancing for the first time last night. It ended like a surprisingly large amount of 80s movies do. The kids had problems, but in the end, all they had to do was dance, and everything was solved. If only our problems were so easily solved. But can they be? And I'm not saying that our problems can be solved, but what about our worries, our anxieties, our fears? Every week we remember Jesus' sacrifice at this time, but do we forget about him raising from the dead, conquering the grave? I'm not up here to give you a sermon today, what, I, what I'm talking about comes straight from what I struggle with. After last week's sermon, my wife asked me, what did you think about the sermon? And I said, I'm good at lamenting. This part's easy. I can lament my problems. I can lament the world's problems all day long. It's the next sermons that I'm going to have the problem with. It's trusting God and, and having that hope that I have the problem with. And I was studying in, in, in my devotions this week, I came across Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. You either carry the burden yourself or you let God carry it. But how does he sustain us? One day at a time is how he chooses to sustain us. I'm like the Israelites. God sent enough manna for them to have what they needed every day. But what did they do? They tried to store up manna for the next day because maybe God won't send manna the next day. And what did God do? He made that manna rot, what they tried to store up. I started thinking about communion. Every week, I break off a piece of the bread. Is that my manna? Am I taking it, trusting God, and then realizing that all during the week, I'm trying to do things myself instead of letting God do it. Sometimes God gives us no other choice but to trust him. Thus the rotting manna. 2 Corinthians verse 10, or chapter 10, verse 5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to God, to Christ. In King James, it says, instead of we demolish arguments in every petition, pretension, it says our imagination. The thoughts that run wild through our head during the week because we're not trusting in God. But he's just asking us to let, let him help us. That's what he wants to do. He gave his son on the cross to die for our sins so that he would know suffering and that he could be with us. Let us pray. Dear God, we, uh, 
We just come to you at this time, Lord, thanking you for the sacrifice of Jesus, for letting, letting him die on the cross for our sins and bringing us back to relationship with you through that, Lord. Help us to remember now as we break this bread, uh, that sacrifice, Lord, and, and uh, the reunion that awaits us. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Let's pray. Dear God, we come now remembering the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins, Lord. And we ask you to also help us to remember that that blood and your Holy Spirit fills us on a daily basis to sustain us, Lord, to give us what we need and just help us to tap into that power. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. All right, this time, if you have kids that are age three through kindergarten, they are to be dismissed to Children's Church. Um, you might want to escort them there so they don't run all over the auditorium on their way to get there. <laughs> all right, y'all sound beautiful this morning, and let's keep praising the Lord with all that we have. Sing out. My soul magnifies the Lord. Glory be to God the Father, and glory be to God the Son. Glory be to God the Spirit. Glory be to God. Glory be to God the Father, and glory be to God the Son. Glory be to God the Spirit. Glory be to God. Let's stand. 
God alone is mighty, mighty our God alone has done great things. God alone is worthy, worthy, holy is his name. Amen. Now, if you don't know this, that song comes from Mary's song in Scripture. So I want you to listen to this. This is from Mary talking about her son. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. He stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. We have victory in Jesus, and we're about to sing about that. I heard no story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. Beneath the cleansing flood. And he is built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. He's me and me. With his streaming blood, he loved me ere I knew him. And he plunged me to and sing blood. Amen. Please be seated. Yes, sir. Good morning. <clears throat> Yesterday we adorned T-shirts like these and um, descended upon neighborhoods and houses and yards and even our church property, and we tried to reflect hope. We tried to make a statement that says that um, as we live and breathe, we will seek to be involved in those things that give others a picture of heaven on earth. Uh, invite those feelings of the true kingdom. And so, even if you had a shirt yesterday or not, <clears throat> even if you just prayed or gave, I want you to know that you are a part of this kingdom that we are driving forward with God to reconcile things and to show people that there is still hope. And I'm so, I'm so blessed. I, I serve with wonderful people. Um, when I think about the men and women 
who shoot videos and who work in children's ministry and in all these ministries that we have here, I'm, I'm so humbled. And so as, you know, we heard of Ms. Jeanette and Ryan's role and Ms. Lisa's role just being tweaked, I want you to understand that these tweakings, if, that, if that's a word, they are bathed in prayer. They are not haphazard grasps, but they are bathed in prayer as the elders and as the leaders here give thought, deliberate thought to who we serve alongside and where we want to go and where the Spirit is leading. Because at the end of the day, no matter how gifted you are with intellect, you have to follow the Spirit because in Him lies the answers for our present and for our future. Amen, church? And so this morning, I want to remind us of hope. We spent last week speaking on lament. And as we see what sin has done to this world, we understand the need for not hiding, not pretending that this world is just a glorious place. It is a glorious place in Christ, in His will, in His desire for what is to come and the taste that we could give people now. So we have to lament. But I was waiting for this morning because in between lament and resurrection, there is hope. Hope's road. So into the jungle we go. It's a jungle out there, literally. And that's where the fight took place. War sets free and war holds captive. And this is the story of one particular soul that held captive by the task and commission to go, but by the need and will to survive as well. So beneath the tall, dew-soaked trees embraced by fog, he is tucked away in a seat of grass, weeds and some type of watercress being so close to swampy soil. He is partially soaked by intermittent rain as he takes a gander at his weapon and checks by eye contact with the soldiers sharing his predicament. And amidst the, the distant sound of gunshots and birds chirping and helicopters and, and monkeys arguing over real estate branches, <laughs> the lone soldier raises a picture. He raises a picture in the bare ray of light piercing through the foliage to make visible the picture of his sweetheart. He will endure bodily sickness as his earthly temple adjusts to jungle life. He will learn to eat from a can, go to the bathroom with a machete, and pour a pot is made of fluvial soil and leaves. His fingers will callous and his nerves will be tested but he will continue and survive and make it out because of his picture. Ladies and gentlemen, strong and weak this morning, arriving and departing, let's talk about hope. Gunshots, termites, snakes, really, really, really bad accommodations. What? drives a soul there on, what makes him take the next step, it is hope. Before we jump into this text, I'd like you guys to take about 30 seconds to greet each other and say what you are hopeful for or say why you are not hopeful. So let's rise. Just use this opportunity to greet each other. And tell someone what you are hopeful for or why you are not hopeful.
As he went along, <laughs> as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. <clears throat> when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Man, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will burst out in cheer. Woo! <laughs> Glory is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Stones, a large, disorganized, and enchanted crowd gathers as Jesus enters the fray. They are overly loud and excited. Some dancing hand in hand. Maybe that's where the waltz came from. Maybe that was the beginning. But it was much faster with palpable energy. They were quoting Psalms 118, verse 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name by the authority of the Lord. The cry of praise, the hosannas are going and coming down, showering the atmosphere like sweet summer rains to quench the hotness of the long days. Hosannas literally shouting, save us now, we pray. They don't know everything. Their perception is half-baked. They're thinking freedom from Roman oppression. Their control over life and practice and social life returning under the power of the sword wielded by God in the direction of the enemies to vanquish them. So they shout, peace in heaven, glory in the highest. Is there, is there war in heaven? Maybe it has not come down from heaven to Jerusalem as yet, since if they had known, as Christ said last week, Jerusalem, as he weeps over, if you had only known what would give you peace, maybe it was not apparent as yet. Maybe it cryptically hints the ongoing battle in the heavenly places for the souls of you and me, for the souls of people. Whatever it was, they wanted it. They were crying and longing for it. Do the soldiers still march in Jerusalem and environs? Yes. Do the rules and regulation of Roman colonizers still exist? Yes. Are some still blind? Yes. Are some still oppressed? Yes. Is Caesar still on his throne? Yes. Is the poor still robbed? Yes. Is following the Lord's way still mean losing your life to gain it? Yes, so all is not well and all is not right, but yet still they shout. They shout because they have tasted, because they have sampled the goodness of God, the way he provides and the way he loves. If you've ever experienced real love, you know that it sometimes overwhelms you. Do I have a, 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 someone to testify in there this morning? Anybody? When you meet and you see and you feel, you smell and you taste, real love, it overpowers you. Little boy, little boy, catching snakes, chasing lizards, climbing trees, walks into his classroom one day when a freckle-faced girl from Georgia 
comes into the school, comes into his class, and suddenly it feels like time stood still. They lock eyes, and everything is slow motion, and boom, the song starts to play. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. And she looks at him, and she smiles, and he says, Oh, there is hope. There is hope. Maybe he thinks he has a chance. The crowd with Jesus got a taste of a different future. They were like customers at Costco, being hooked on the tasty samples so they could buy the entire product. Without all the answers, still living under oppression, they are able to have joy because of the taste received. In this next frame, I want to talk about people and hope, not policy and arguments from the left, right, or the center. I want you to look, remember the scene as Jesus is coming in, and people are throwing down their garments, and they are shouting, and they are dancing, and they are saying, blessed is he. I want you to take that picture of hope and connect it to this picture coming up. I see people and I ask myself, why would you travel and sit under a bridge? Why would you walk or be packed in a vehicle or take a boat ride on a vessel unworthy of the tempest that the sea can be? It is hard to see the faces and the souls, so let me not be so general. Let me turn the scope a bit and zero in on two souls to make the point a little more poignant, if I may. Why do you have your daughter out in the elements, lady? Where have you come from and why? You see, I believe this lady loves her daughter. I believe she might have her future in mind if she has ran and traveled that long and that far from the only society that she's ever known. Why would you risk your life and your daughter's life? Why would you take chances of meeting unscrupulous people who might treat you like commodity or exploit your resources with no intentions of helping you? Maybe, just maybe it's because of something called hope that in front of me, things can be better than what they are now. Maybe I am tired of running from violence or from hunger and poverty. Maybe it breaks my heart to see that I can't give my kids what they need. Maybe we do it as well. Maybe we sacrifice our dreams for our dreams and for our kids. Maybe we know how she feels having endured many things. Having to be strong, if only a dream in mind, of attaining a different existence. Maybe the people in Jerusalem have seen what life can be. And are excited to speak about it and throw down their limited pieces of clothing to the floor to welcome the being that promised a brighter future. Into the text we go, down the Mount of Olives, donkey traveling slow, breaking soft rocks under the weight of a king. There we encounter the person and the voice of opposition. Because hope always has detractors. Those who benefit from the spoils of hopelessness and the suffering of people. Some of the Pharisees, verse 39, and as you read the text, read slowly. Because it will reveal what it wants you to hear. It says, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Not all. But some, which leads me to believe that even in this hardened group of so-called authoritative teachers and leaders, hearts were beginning to become soft, malleable, because of that one word, some of the Pharisees, which means the rest weren't saying anything. They will probably be welcoming Hosannas as well. 
Hope is beginning to pierce even the hardest of hearts. Teacher, rebuke them. Tell them to shut up. Stop this melee. This much ado about nothing. Christ, who's been really quiet about his kingship, as he heals, he says, shh. Don't tell anybody. And what happens? They go and they tell. <laughs> shh. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. No, cryptically, he hints of his messiahship. He says it without saying it. As the hour draws near, the hour of the cross, then the, Hom the Muhammad Ali proverbial punch in the gut comes. He says, if I try to stop these people motivated by hope, the rocks will begin to praise. If I try to block the hole, the thing is going to come out in the next hole. Like in those cartoons you see, where he's trying to block the hole and the water comes up, blocks it, feed on it, water comes up. You cannot stop hope. You cannot kill hope. You cannot bury hope. You cannot torture hope long enough for it to quit. And that's what makes it hope. You cannot kill hope. If I try to muzzle the mouths of a people taken for granted and pushed down and held down and told that they are just a commodity in service of Rome and her kings, the praise and the shouts will find another outlet, another avenue to be expressed. In short, Jesus says like, MC Ham, I... I can't, I can't touch this. I can't. Because this has a mind, a mission that it understands that it has to be fulfilled. And so I remember in Mark chapter 10, as blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, is sitting and he, he hears Jesus coming and people are making commotion and he says Jesus son of David have mercy on me and the people use the same word that the, the Pharisees were using here rebuke your disciples they said to blind Bartimaeus stop stop making noise he ain't got time for you and the more they try to uh, squelch you know he's screaming louder and louder and louder he became until Jesus responded to the cry of hope because that's what the Savior does. He responds to the cry of hope. From the jungle to the Texas border to the Underground Railroad, hope finds a way to spark action. Hilarious and crazy, out of mind, insane. It is hope seeking to find a voice. Where will you go and how long will you go traveling in the dark? Under the cloud of darkness that is ownership of bodies. You know if you get caught, there's punishments in place. Other than dog bites and catching ticks or poison ivy. Harriet Tubman and the rest of mothers and fathers and children. So swift into the dark, they go up north. Freedom tucked away up north. Maybe that's why it's called the land of the free, the home of the brave. Maybe that's why for they bravely sought freedom. The hope of the ones who run and risk it all. See, this Wednesday I was walking into the lobby and I saw a picture of hope as well. I saw people waiting and they are anticipating a conversation. And they are not being reserved they are not being prideful. They are there to bear it all. Their face and their children and their circumstance and their situations to ask, Saturn Road, I am down. Could you please help? And I'm looking at that picture and I'm thinking, people sacrificing dignity, they sacrifice ego, to sit and say, this is what I have. This is my offering. This is where I'm at. Can you give me some hope? Can you give my kids some hope? From Jerusalem to the jungle to the border to the underground railroad to the streets of Garland to the church pew to your home, hope will scream into the future. 
from the darkest nights of the present with the understanding that joy comes in the morning. I don't think everyone heard that, so I'm going to say it again. From the darkest nights of the present, with the understanding that joy comes in the morning, hope will scream. So hope makes the weak strong. Today, I want you all to be strong remembering, meditating on, talking about, living like you've already received, even if you've just tasted. So go to the cemetery if you have to and bring flowers and read the epitaphs of loved ones who've gone to receive more than a taste. Go to your cabinet and pull out those photos that you avoid because it brings so much pain because this loved one, this mother, this husband, this father is not here anymore. And think of the memories. Remember them and have hope that you will see them again. Go to your kids and your families, your husbands and your wives and speak life into broken relationships. Even if they are not mended as yet, or there is still a lot of work to do and strong feelings are involved. Go with the hope that what you see now could be different if we engage with a picture of what we want it to be as opposed to what it is now. Go to your street corners and see people coming in and going out of neighborhoods and know that they are not saved, that they don't know God. Pray that they may come to know God by those who plant and water like you and me. Go in hope that even if they are not saved today, that God will do something. God will send somebody. We will plant. We will water so that they can be saved because God wills that all men be saved. Go with that hope, understanding that what you see now can change. And will change with the help of God. So last week we spent the time lamenting. This week we look at the lament through the lens of light. Because light drives out darkness. You know what I just said? <laughs> Light drives out darkness. And if you are light and if I'm light, then everywhere we go, the darkness has to tip us, take a step back. Ooh. And it's not your power. It never was, never will be. It's the power of God in you. So if you show up, God should show up. And if you show up without each other, then something is wrong, but it's not him. Something is wrong. And I'm not telling you. I'm telling myself. And you are overhearing what I'm telling myself. I don't ever want to go anywhere and show up by myself. Because I don't bring hope. I live with the bringer of hope. So if I go with him, we show up in hope together. There are too many people showing up by themselves. That's why this world is broken. Because when you show up by yourself, all you have is yourself, your ego, your agenda. And so as we put a bow on this thing, remember these people here shouting Hosanna. They don't know everything. They don't understand everything. They only have half of the picture. God says, I cannot stop them. Because the rocks will cry out. Remember Jerusalem. Remember the borders. And don't be political. I don't mess with politics. I mess with people. And people do things for a reason. 
whether you agree or not. People do things for a reason. And that's what I want you to focus on. Why are they doing it? Let's take it a little closer. Let's forget history. Let's forget geography. Let's put it at your seat in your lap. Why do you do what you do? Why do you show up here? Why do you push through persevering in faith? What is your hope? What is your hope? Is it in Christ? Or is it in something else? Think about those things. Before there's deliverance, before a change in your circumstance, physical or spiritual, have you seen enough? Mm, 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 mm. Have you tasted enough to trade all that you hold dear for the receiving of a kingdom which cannot be broken? The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Destined to win. So we aim to bring a taste at Saturn Road. Some who profit from fear and heartbreak refuse to taste because of the ones they exploit. But we are Christ's employees working in the bakery of the Holy Spirit. And we are trying to provide morsels of living bread to jumpstart the desire for a kingdom free of strife. So, this morning as you go, or while going, while living, while praising, while showing, while shining the light, understand that in the darkest of nights, when it is the darkest, hope shines the brightest. If you are in need of hope this morning, if you want to give it with your words and your actions and your affirmations, if you want to receive it because you are just in a broken place and you've lost your faith, some faith, there's no judgment here. We are human beings. We all know what life is like. The avenue of praise open. We are here to encourage each other to lift up, to build up. Not by our own bootstraps, but by the Holy Spirit power that is in this place. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know about today. And today, He holds me. And He holds you. Let's revel in that hope. Let's celebrate that hope. If you need to share it, if you need to hear it, to feel it, the avenue of prayer is open. Come. Come as we sing about this hope. Let's stand. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, teach your children to stop the fighting, start uniting all as one. Let's get together, loving forever, sanctuary for you. You were the one, Lord, who sent the Savior, heart and soul, Lord, for our land. And it is you, Lord, who knows our weakness. You refine us with your own hand. So, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Good morning. Great sermon. 
Thank you very much, Robbie. Um, we have uh, a concern with uh, the Winkler family and uh, Tom Winkler, uh, his wife Sharon, uh, his, his, uh, her mother is going on hospice care and like to pray for their family and through this, prime, this time. Lord, um, we just come before you and, and pray for the, uh, the Winkler family and, and, and uh, just be with uh, Sharon's mom in this situation, the passing uh, of time, and, and, uh, and it's, it's kind of the twilight of her life. And, and uh, Lord, we just come to this point and, and just give them peace and understanding that you're with them and guidance uh, through this difficult time. And uh, watch over them and uh, just know that their love is surrounding them. And, it's your, and uh, we pray this in your name. Amen. We're going to read one more scripture together. And again, you're going to read the words that are in red. This is a great way to close the service. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach through this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And the church said, be his witnesses this week.